the Joe Rogan experience. So when we're talking about San Diego being like a very fit place, do you do any sort of strength and conditioning or anything for skateboarding? Is that something that people do? Some people do it. I never found it to help my skating. And I always felt like skating kept me fit. So I never really did it. I mean, outside of swimming and surfing, which is more upper body than skating, obviously. But um, but I do feel like that would have benefited me later in life. I just got stuck in my mode. And then just skating was and it. And you stay there. You're in your mode now. You don't do anything. I don't do anything else. I, I do. I do make an effort to like swim some laps, because um, my mom lived uh, till her 90s and she swore by swimming. Oh, swimming so, is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, she would go. You know, through. I mean, I remember all as a kid. She would definitely. She had to get her 20 laps in every day. Um, and and we we are. Our, uh, where I live, the residential area had a community swimming pool that was like Olympic size. So that oh, was like nice. her thing, yeah. yeah. We were talking before about uh, surfing, and I was saying that I think that surfing, at least partially, would kind of mimic some of the muscles that you use in skateboarding. And then you're telling me about getting towed in by Laird Hamilton yeah. <laughs> <laughs> while, yeah, so, while you drink his coffee. Wow. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so, well, my brother, my older brother <clears throat> was a surfer and he got me into skating because he skated in the seventies when that was the thing was they were trying to emulate surfing with, with skateboards. And so he actually gave me one of his old boards. That was my first skateboard. Um, and then he would drive me to the skate park once a week, like come home from college and take me to the park. And then I just got hooked. Like that was, that was my home way from home from that point on. Um, and so I surf pretty regularly i would say less now but um but it was hard not to with my brother's influence and we were in hawaii my brother actually used to be the uh editor of surfer magazine so he knows all the oh, surfers wow. um because he's he's a journalist um really good writer uh teaches at stanford now actually and so we went to hawaii we went to maui and he said hey laird said he'd take us out towing surfing if you want to go i'm like we're going to go tones over with Laird Hamilton. <laughs> like the, I don't think his level of what is mellow is something that is what we would consider. And he's, and I go, but you know, we got to go like it's once in a lifetime. Right. So they took us out uh, to Spreckles, which is near Jaws, which is their big spot. This is like early two thousands. So towing serving was just starting to come into play. I'll never forget Dave Kalama. Who's one of the surfers, one of his homies, he was f trying out the first foil board there. Oh, wow. And he had, he was wearing ski boots attached to the foil board. That's how he was riding it. <laughs> I was like, these guys are out of their minds. And, uh, and so... Uh, Does it detach like a ski boot if you fall? I never saw it detach. Oh, He's my God. Nuts. Yeah. It, so you have to recover and, and swim to the surface while I, you're permanently I was connected? too focused on trying to survive myself <laughs> to worry about what he was doing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, Rush Randall, who's another um, windsurfer there, he was towing me, and Laird was towing my brother. And I'll never forget them being outside, and then, you know, they're saying it's a small day, and they're like, oh, I think there might be, like, a some 10 or 12 foot sets and I know what 10 or 12 foot in Hawaiian measurement means. And I was like, Kid, just don't tell me into one of those. Okay. And, uh, and then I'll never forget looking out and, and Rush said, here comes one. I'm like, where, where? Cause you're so far out. Right. And he's like, get ready. Okay. And so then I got ready and I'm getting towed and all of a sudden this, this thing, this mountain just swells up underneath me. And before I know it, I'm just in the pit of this move this way that was like double overhead biggest way i've ever ridden for sure um and for me it's backside so when you're going backside you're, you're just sort of looking down the line you're not looking back at the at the barrel what does that mean by backside um so the wave is breaking this way and the my back over my top. back is to the face of the wave oh okay right and it backside's a little more challenging just because of the the turning and, and the way you're facing Mm. So when you go on front side, you're facing the wave. You can really see down the line. You can okay. look back easily. Um, so I'm going backside, and I remember looking looking at the wall, thinking like I've ridden 20 foot skate ramps, and I'm like that's that looks like about a 20 foot skate ramp. So I was going, and I was cruising, and then I did a, a little cutback. So I started going to, back towards the barrel, and 
I looked at the barrel and it was like the most frightening thing I've ever seen in my life. Cause it was, you know, it was like a massive <laughs> hollow wave that you see in movies that you see Larry just dancing around in. And I'm like, I can't, I'm not getting near that thing. And I immediately just <laughs> turned back and went down the line even further to just get ahead of it. Um, and then I did find myself after a few waves getting cocky and I tried to pull into the barrel and it just clobbered me in the head. And then I, you know, you're wearing a life vest. And then I went down, I'll never forget, like I felt myself going down one shelf and, you know, trying to swim up to the top. And then I felt it go down another shelf and I was like, oh, this is bad. Um, and then finally made it up to the surface and Rush is like three feet from me. Oh, wow. Because he's just been chasing, you know, those guys are, they're the masters. Experts in yeah. recovering people that get clobbered. Yeah. Fuck. And I was just like, how long were you down for? I, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't like a crazy hold down, but in my inexperience and, and not conditioned body, it felt like a long time. Um, and I, and I told Rush, I was like, Oh, that was, that was scary. I was never been you know, held down that much. He's like, yeah, I've had my worst hold downs out here. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks. I was telling you, I was, you know, I get in the sauna every day and I, I'd said something to Laird and he sent me a picture of his sauna. Let me pull it up here. It's he's at. 250 fucking degrees in his sauna. I mean, I don't even understand why he would do that, but he's like, I'm pissed that this thing doesn't go any hotter. <laughs> Let me, yeah, he lives on a different plane. He gets in there with oven mitts at 250 degrees. With oh, Here it is. Look at this crazy motherfucker. Look at that. So does he wear oven mitts so his skin won't melt off? Yeah, because he rides his fucking Airdyne bike. Oh my God. So the metal of the Airdyne bike would literally cook him. I mean, I cook a steak at 250 degrees in the smoker. <laughs> this is crazy. And it's 200, it's actually like probably, it's, it's pinned at 250 because that's as hot as this thermostat gets. Oh, yeah, right. Like so it's probably yeah. hotter than 250. He's out of his fucking yeah, mind. Yeah, he's nuts. Um, he's he's more fascinating. More is always better, is his, his quote to me. <laughs> I just, I, there's got to be a point. I did it once here. I was trying to, after he came on the podcast, I was trying to copy him. So I was doing it at like 210 and I did once at 220. I was burning like the inside of my throat from breathing in the air. I was, I felt like oh, I was yeah. cooking myself because yeah. I was in there for like 20 minutes. I was like, and then I'd get out and it was as tired as I've ever been in my life. I would just collapse on the mats. After I got out of the sauna, I was like, I got to stop doing this. And then I'd come in and do podcasts, and I, I was having a hard time talking. I was like, <clears throat> <laughs> like my throat was, was cooked. It was basically getting cooked. Yeah, I never did well with that stuff. I, we, um, we got one, actually. We got one of the uh, infrared ones. Um, Those are different. Those yeah. are di he, he doesn't like the infrared ones. Laird said that they gave him a real bad skin condition, and that like there's something about it's particularly the temperatures huh. that he's putting them at. You know, yeah, I'm, well, I got to start somewhere. I'm not gonna. <laughs> well, I think the dry heat. It's like that's where the studies have been done on them, and I'm sure there's some benefits to the infrared one. But according to him, he's not into it. Yeah, well, I don't. I, I, like I said, I don't really do it anyway. Um, my wife, my kids, they like going in there, but I usually go in for a little bit and like we'll watch one episode of something, and I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Have you done his crazy water workouts? No, he does in Malibu? no way. No, I would never survive that. Not a this, no. <laughs> I have a bunch of friends that have gone up there and trained with him, and then they just text me afterwards. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, because he's just not. No one, no one can can go easy. No, he's not. E there's no easy with Larry. Yeah, Hamilton. there's only yeah. two speeds. I was telling you about his ankle. For people, don't, he came in here and showed me his ankle. He has an ankle that broke that he never did anything to. He never bothered getting a cast. He never bothered getting it surgery. And it's it's like the root of a tree. It's this fucked up, <laughs> thick ass knee of an ankle. It's so weird. And like, wow, that's next level. He's just a next level human. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I. I respect him and admire him, but I don't want him to train me. Well, his workouts are so crazy. Like, they take a 75-pound dumbbell, and they swim with it. Like, they'll hold yeah. a 75-pound dumbbell, and then you're swimming across the pool with one arm while holding the 75-pound <laughs> dumbbell while trying to pop your head up and breathe. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> not, not my conditioning. <laughs> 
But I like that there's a guy like that out there. Out for sure. I yeah. think it's important. Leading the charge. Yeah, just some fucking maniac at the front <laughs> yeah, of the line. Exactly. Who's just so, he's so psycho about everything. The guy sends you a 250 degree sauna that he's mad that doesn't get any higher. <laughs> it's just, it's just so interesting. <laughs>